Hello, how are you guys? Yeah. Having a good time? Yeah. Wonderful, okay, cool. So let's start with Headless CMS Showdown. We do a lot of live demoing today. Four different CMSs, Headless CMSs, and we compare it. Stroppy, Sanity, Contentful, and Drupal. Uh, before I start, I actually want to know who's using Drupal. Okay. Who's using Stroppy? Oh, two, three hands. That's nice. Four hands. Who's using Sanity? Two. Well, we are at the Drupal con, that's for sure. Contentful? A uh, couple. So you will learn some new things. Um, so agenda today. So we'll do a, a brief introduction of what Headless is actually all about, and then a CMS overview and a live demo, how we build content models in all these solutions. And then we'll, we will do a conclusion, uh, basically. And also, and that's the goal of the presentation, what can we actually learn from these new systems? Uh, Strapi, for example, is pretty new. They got an investment of about, I don't know, $50 million last year or this year. So they are growing rapidly, and we wanted to know um, why they are becoming popular and what we can learn as a Drupal community. So let's quickly introduce us. So uh, hello, uh, I am Natalia. I am from Spain, from Barcelona, and I left Spain 10 years ago. And since uh, five years, I am living in Switzerland, and I work uh, at NetNote as front-end developer. Yeah, I'm Lucas. I'm the founder of Netno, the digital agency in Switzerland. We are doing Drupal projects in since about two years, mostly decoupled solutions. And uh, yeah, we built NodeHive app, a, no, a, a headless CMS solution on top of Drupal. And we will also demo that as part of how Drupal can be used as a headless solution. It's fully open source. NodeHive core is the project page on Drupal.org. So let's start with the introduction. Uh, first of all, we want to give a bit of context of what is headless and what is a headless CMS. So uh, a headless CMS is a content management system that separates the presentation layer uh, where the content is served uh, from the backend where the content is managed. So the, manage, uh, the content is managed in one place uh, at the backend and you uh, can deliver this content via an API so there is uh, no default front-end, so to this reason it's very flexible and you have a lot of options. So it's front-end independent. After uh, this short overview of what is a headless uh, content management system, uh, we asked ourselves uh, if as a Drupal agency, because we are uh, day in our daily business working with Drupal, if Drupal is still relevant in a headless CMS world, so for this reason, we wanted to see uh, which are the new options at the market, to explore a bit that and to test it and see where Drupal is and what will bring the future to us. Uh, and we are at the point that we want to see how are others doing and what we can learn from them as a Drupal community, how we can improve Drupal, because there is other solutions, they are solid too, uh, and we can see, uh, we want to see what they are doing uh, and what we can take from them. So that's the reason why we will show you today uh, how others are doing, and maybe there is new options that we will discover that we could like take that with us. So uh, these are our fighters of today. Uh, first of all, uh, we have Strapi, uh, Sanity, then Contentful, and of course Drupal, so they will take part of our headless CMS showdown. Uh, for this uh, presentation, for the showdown, uh, we have uh, a use case uh, to test uh, the, the different options that all the content management systems offer. So we will build the presence for the Green Bowl. It's a restaurant chain. And we have like three entities, a restaurant entity with a different kind of fields. Then we have an employee entity that will be referenced by, by the restaurants. And then we have a page entity to, to have a home page, a single page for the different restaurant change, change, chains. 
So uh, we will show uh, this project with every uh, content management system. So let's start. Like our first uh, fighter is Strapi. Uh, Strapi is a headless CMS. Uh, it can be self-host. It's built uh, with Node.js and the API type or they offer REST uh, API and GraphQL. Uh, it's uh, extensible. There is a lot of plugins and you can extend it with custom controllers. Uh, the authentication is already built in, uh, but you can customize it too. Uh, and the content modeling is very flexible and there is an active community and there is enterprise support too. And they offer free and paid plans. So now I will change to the demo. So first of all, uh, if you want to start a project with Strapi, uh, you can like uh, yeah, create uh, the project and you can run npm run develop and then you will have a running application. They deliver the admin panel, so that's what I will show you now. If we sw switch there, then when you start the project, you are already, or you have to log in, and that's our dashboard page. So if we switch to the content manager, maybe that's the most important part for the editors because it's where they can edit the content. Uh, we have here different kind of collection types. Uh, I will show you first uh, a bit the content of uh, one restaurant. In this case, we have here the green ball uh, of Lille. So we can see here the different fields, the title, an opening hour field, it's a JSON kind field. Uh, field. Uh, we can reference here uh, the, the team uh, of this restaurant. And then we can save uh, our content very easily. Uh, we can hear that's very similar to Drupal because you can here edit the model or configure the view mode. Uh, of the edit page of an entity. So I will show you now uh, how it looks an employee. It's like we have the, the three fields and yeah, you have like the same options like in the restaurant. So uh, now we will switch to the content type builder uh, and then we will add a new field to the restaurant so we will see how it works and how it's the user inf interface for for a, a site builder. So I am now at the restaurant entity and I will add a new email field. So you see I have here a model, there is a lot of uh, field types uh, and if I select the email field, I can add the content there. In this case, I don't want to require the field but you have different options there and I can save it and here there is a small uh, reload of the page and after that we already have our email. So if I switch to the content, to the restaurant, I have here my new field and I can like fill it and use it uh, to expose it to, to the front end. So maybe interesting too, it's, we have here like a media library, uh, very flexible, you can edit the images, uh, and then the plugins, uh, there is a marketplace, uh, they have uh, 159 plugins and you can like copy the command or check the, the page of the plugin and add it to your project. So normally you have to, to follow the, the requirements of every model, like in Drupal sometimes. And here we have the settings where you ha can configure all the, the roles for the users, uh, for the API, that's very important because you, you can hear, for example, for the public uh, API, I can like say I want all the public users to find the content and find one content, one restaurant in this case, but they can't create or delete content, so you have to configure everything to expose the API to the front end. So that's like the, the the simple or the power of a Strapi without extensions and without customizations. And now I will show you uh, the API, that's uh, the API of a Strapi. It's interesting that they don't deliver uh, the, the, the fields that you are reference, referencing. So in this case, you always have to add uh, this parameter here to populate all the content. But you can see here that I have uh, the green ball lean, uh, with the whole information that we saw at the, at the content editing overview. 
So then we are here already ready to use it for our front end. So that's uh, the, the overview of Strapi. So we will switch to our presentation. And uh, that's uh, what we like it and with the things that we found challenges with. So we like it that the Strapi has a modern front end, the user interface is nice, is simple, easy to use. Uh, the flexible data modeling is very interesting too. So I showed uh, the, the different kind of um, the collection types, but they, have, they offer single types to uh, components. They are like paragraphs, you can reuse them. So it's very flexible. Uh, they already have built-in API endpoints. That's always nice that it's everything already there. You don't have to do extra things or configure settings. Uh, and they have a nice plugin ecosystem and it's growing at the time. Uh, and it's self-host and open source and that's always a, a nice thing to have. And we found challenges with performance overhead. So sometimes there is heavy uh, overload time, so that's not very nice. Uh, they offer by default SQL Lite database. So for certain kind of projects, maybe it's, uh, at, it's too simple. So you have to customize everything. At, yeah, if you customize something, then you are going out of the strappy context. So you have to carry with the consequences. And Strapi is a younger ecosystem, so that's a thing that it's a challenge for the moment, so it's growing, and there is a lack of enterprise features. So uh, that's uh, the overview of Strapi. We think that it's ideal for projects that require a highly customizable self-hosted solution, and that they want flexibility with API options, and of course, it's open source, so that's beautiful. Perfect, so then we will switch to our next fighter. Uh, it's Sanity. Uh, Sanity, it's a headless SMS. Uh, it can't be self-host, so it's cloud-based. Uh, it's built with JavaScript React. Uh, they, have, uh, they offer GraphQL, uh, but they have more option, options so you can extend it. Uh, they, have, they offer plugins and custom entity widgets. Uh, and they have uh, authentication, it's built in and you can extend it uh, with three party services. Uh, and they offer a flexible content modeling and there is an active community, official support too, and they offer free and paid plans. So we will switch to Sanity. Uh, yeah. Here I have like my Sanity application. Uh, and then uh, you can start it with npm run dev and then you have your running application. It's interesting because they offer like two products. They have a Sanity Lake or Sanity Lake, like it's where your database is uh, based so you can host it by yourself. So here we have the whole information of the database of our project and then we have Sanity Studio and that's uh, the, the dashboard for the editors and for the users that want to use or serve content with Sanity. So that's our backend, uh, it's very simple. Uh, I, ex I have to say I extended the, the backend with the media plugin to see how media works, but by default you don't have that. So uh, we can see here uh, the restaurant entity, like in Strapi, so we have again the, the green ball lil uh, with the different fields. And you can, for example, reference something and publish it. Yeah, it's, it's very nice that you have already here all the revisions, so you can switch back, you can see when was everything done, so it's a nice overview of, of the workflow. And uh, now I will show you, show you an employee. So we have here an uh, employee entity with the different fields. And maybe what's interesting here is that you can here, you don't have a, a content modeling overview, you can add new fields uh, at uh, the Sanity Studio. So it's a 
content management system, more focus for developers because you have to extend everything by yourself. So I will show you how to extend uh, the different entities. Uh, I will switch, switch there to Biscode. I, I don't know if you can see it. Mm, not very good, so. Okay, okay. Maybe I can switch to uh, another color theme. Better? Okay, perfect. So uh, we can see here the restaurant entity. Uh, and to create new entities, you have to define a new schema. They are documents. And here I have the components. They are like the paragraphs that you can reuse. So I will show you the restaurant entity we have here. Uh, the titles, so they offer different uh, type uh, fields, but you can extend it by yourself, so you can create your own file types. For example, in this case, uh, I was not able to use a JSON field, so I created an object with the different opening hours, but I can like uh, create an, an opening field type to reuse it for other entities. So it's very simple, the schema. And I have here, you can add validations. In, in this case, there is no email field, but I have a validation to, to check that the, the content that you are adding is an email. So I will uncomment that. And we will see there is a reload too. And now if I go to the restaurant entity, we can see there that I have uh, the email field, so I can add the information and publish it. So the overview is very simple, and we have here the media, so we have here the, the different uh, assets. That I extended that with, uh, with, um, with a plugin, so it's not by default, but uh, you can, it's very easy to extend. You have to extend your code to, to allow to have uh, the, the different plugins. And now I will show you the, the API because they offer, they have a known query language and they offer this overview. It, the name is Vision, so you can test here your queries. In this case, I will expose everything and we can see the output of our content. So I am exposing everything we see here, for example, an employee or I have maybe there like other information like the restaurants. So that's an important point to know that you have to learn this uh, query language of Sanity to, to use it. So perfect, that's the, the overview of Sanity. And maybe I can show you to the, the page type because I haven't showed that uh, for, the, for Strapi. Here is like, it's the same, but I wanted to show that you can create the Slack uh, fields and you can generate the Slack. So uh, that's nice too, that you already have that and you can reference the content. So I will switch to the presentation. And uh, that's what we like it and what, yeah, we, we, the things we found challenge with. So we like it that there is real-time collaboration. I was unable to show you that, but that's a very nice feature. Maybe you can check it later, but you can edit the content uh, at the same time, so that's very nice. Uh, it's highly customizable, so you can uh, customize uh, the whole backend, and they offer portable text too, so when you use a rich editor, uh, all the content that you are adding to the rich editor, uh, it's a structured data, so that's very nice for developers. And uh, then we have uh, the strong query language that you can use with the Strapi uh, that allows you to filter a lot, and to, you have a lot of options. It's, it's very nice to have it and it's well documented. And we found challenges with the lack of no code features. So if you are not a developer, maybe it will be difficult to start with Sanity. Uh, the pricing model too, because they have, they offer a free uh, plan, but if the project scales, uh, it can be expensive. Uh, and the other thing is that they offer content lake that you depend on third party services. So you can host Sanity and that's not always nice because maybe there is clients, clients that doesn't want that. 
and it's like a pri private enterprise and if they don't want to offer that anymore then you will have a problem there. And we think that uh, the query language is a challenge too because if you don't know the, uh, the language then you have to learn it only for sanity. So we think that it's uh, well suited for dynamic projects where collaboration is a key and where you need to, to create uh, content structures in an efficient way. So that's uh, the short overview of sanity and now we will switch to Contentful. Yeah, let's talk about Contentful. Um, Contentful is a headless CMS, obviously. It's not possible to self-host, so it's only available as a SaaS. And API type is you can uh, access the content through REST and GraphQL. Extensibility is quite limited, so you have to build apps. Um, so it's not um, how we are used to as Drupal developers. And yeah, content modeling is also very active. And um, yeah, there is also a pricing in place about Contentful. So I will also do a short demo. Um, so when I log in uh, to um, Contentful, this is the dashboard. And then I see at the top um, three tabs. So I first open up Content. Um, I get a list, an overview of all um, contents I created, for example, the restaurant entity. And so this is the editor. Um, I can uh, link other content, so I can select existing content, for example, if I want to link a gallery, I can do that. And then I can publish it immediately. Let's go back. Um, What's a bit strange as a Drupal developer, they combine everything. So whether it's an entity or let's say a paragraph, for example, a gallery for them is just yet another entity basically. Um, that's it. And then there is the content modeling. Um, that's actually very powerful. So let's go and extend the restaurant entity. So it's very nice, very clean, visual. I can add a new field. Let's add a new text field. Um, and then you also have several types here. You can add additional settings like validation settings, also the appearance, and then you can simply create it and then save it and then it's available in the content section. So. Yeah, that's the core functionality. Then obviously they also have a media library here. You can add assets very quickly, single assets, multiple as uh, assets. And then there is also apps. Um, I said before, it's a little bit weird how they uh, make, let's say, your custom functionality available through um, apps. Um, so it's not very flexible. You actually have to self-host your own apps and use API calls to go back and forth, so you cannot really access the code APIs, if, if you want to say like that. What's interesting about uh, Contentful, they offer Compose and Launch. So basically, Compose is an additional, let's say, view on top of the headless content, if you want to say like that. Um, Compose is intended to be for content editors, so it's even cleaner and simpler. So here you only have stuff that actually appears for example, on a website, which with a slug and can be accessed. So here again, I have, um, for example, the restaurant entity and then can start creating that. And it's really only made for editors. Yeah. Um, what's also powerful, they have a feature called launch. Uh, launch is intended to uh, create kind of releases of content. So if you want to update um, your website and you change like say 100 pages, and then you want to release them at one point, you can organize this with releases. So content staging is one key feature of uh, Contentful and also very powerful. So that's this. And then um, I want to show you the API as well. So the API is actually very simple. They offer a content delivery API. It's similar to JSON API in Drupal. So you also have to include stuff and this is more or less the output. So yeah, you get the data, 
um, out of it and then you can parse it in your prompt and then work with it. <clears throat> so let's go to the presentation. So we liked, uh, what we like about Contentful, um, these content environments, that's actually one of the core features. So staging content is one of the key features Contentful offers. It's SaaS based, so it's really very simple. You go on Contentful, you log in with, Google, with your Google credentials, you start your space or environment, and then you can start building your, your content models and um, you can start building your front ends. So the content delivery is very powerful, and they also offer a GraphQL API plugin, so you, 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 are, you have options there. And also the media handling is, is uh, very powerful and makes it really stand out. Obviously Contentful is uh, not open source, so it's not an option where you can self-host it. And as I said before, custom code is only possible through apps, and this is not really um, practical. So that's um, uh, Contentful. Now I want to show you Drupal with our extension, the Node Hive Core extension. Uh, I mean, I don't have to explain what Drupal is and I will directly go into the presentation. So this is how we build um, decoupled or headless uh, sites, um, admin in interfaces based on Drupal. And actually when I, um, Log, log in. After login, I arrive at the dashboard. And what I see here is I see the node hive spaces, we call it, a space you can even imagine like a website, basically. So when I go there, um, I have an overview of what's available in that space. And if I want to create a new restaurant, so let's, we, let's say we open up a new restaurant, I can do that and create my node. And you see, I can link it here with the specific space. Right, so I go back to the space. Then um, what we focus on, um, Drupal out of the box offer the menu and we completely switch that. So we completely replace it and we also rename the, the terms of Drupal. For example, content we call now data and then you have access, for example, to all your media or all spaces or all taxonomies, whatever. So we really copy what we learned before from Strapi or Contentful. And then you also have data models, so if you want to create a new content type, you simply go there and you can add your content type, right? Um, yeah, that's it. And then um, about JSON API, I mean, this is really simple in, uh, in Drupal, you know, you can access slash JSON API and then you have access to all the endpoints and basically use it. Out of the box, it's without any authentication. There are many options to do that. So that's it from that point of view. So in general, um, what we like about Drupal, obviously, is it's highly flexible content architecture. Uh, just one example, in Drupal, we know the GeoField. Uh, in um, Contentful, they also offer something like GeoField, but Strapi, as we said, it's still young. They, they don't offer something like a GeoField. Um, Drupal offers JSON API out of the box in core and have many options in contributed like GraphQL and others. Um, lots of modules, so Drupal is really scalable because of its long history even in a headless context. What is challenging, obviously it's the UI, it's not a single page application, it feels a little bit slow. And also what we found challenging is the JSON API documentation is not very well done, so when you let's say new to Drupal and you want to use it as a headless CMS, it's actually very hard to understand how JSON API works with all the includes and sub requests. So we can definitely do a better job there. So let's come to a conclusion or maybe an overview of comparison and learnings. I mean, who's the winner? I don't know, I mean, uh, uh, of course Drupal, yeah. I mean, when selecting a headless CMS, obviously I have to consider different uh, things, um, the project scale, complexity of your content models, also technical expertise, not everybody has a Drupal developer in-house, um, and also how important are features like real-time col collaboration, media handling, and self-hosting also. So each solution 
offers um, a blend of these capabilities and you have to decide on your own. We are from Switzerland, so we, ha we have to say it very neutral. <laughs> But what, what can we learn and maybe also copy from uh, Stroppy, Sanity, and Contentful? Well, definitely it's the UI. Uh, Drupal lacks of a fast and modern UI, even if you use Gin. Um, Strapi as well as Sanity, they uh, offer single page application feeling. Also, page reloads are very fluid. Also, the concept of auto-saving, for example, in Contentful, you click on the title of the entity, you are not going to the node view, what we would call, they directly go to the edit, and then it's auto-saving. So when I change the title, it's immediately um, saved, so I come back and forth, um, so that's nice. It's also the simplicity out of the box. So the admin menu in Drupal core is, to be honest, a mess, and we can do that much better. Um, and also, I mean, um, in a headless context, the backend can be much, much simpler, because you don't have to you know, configure all the whatever functionality you want to offer um, um, in, a, in, a, in a solution, in a Drupal site, for example. I said that already, headless documentation is obviously much stronger with Contentful and uh, the other headless solutions. Drupal really lacks that, um, or I haven't seen it. Maybe it's, it exists, but it's really not good. And also, something like an API explorer would be nice so JSON, um, JSON API in Drupal is powerful, but how do I actually load paragraphs and you know, media items within a paragraph? So this is not very uh, self-explanatory, uh, self so we, we can do that much, much better. And we are actually working on an auto-documentation feature within NodeHive, so you can click on API docs and it will auto-generate um, the API request for you. Also starting a project in Drupal, we think it's still hard. Um, so when you are used to, um, let's say the NPM world, it's much easier. You simply start a project, NPM run dev, and then you're off and go. And also standard features are, um, are relatively clunky in Drupal, like working with revisions. It's not intuitive, but uh, we saw the different solutions before. They have a very nice interface. It's easy to switch between revisions. We can do that better. Also, image handling in Drupal, like cropping features or even image editors. There are solutions out there, but it's a little bit clunky. It's not like, oh, wow, that's nice, and let's use it. Also, duplicating content in Drupal, it's doable. Uh, but it's not, you know, it's not like uh, smooth. And also the slash admin slash content view in Drupal, the out of the box, we can do much better. I specifically like how Contentful is doing with this search box at the top and you can filter and search very quickly and if you have a large site with a lot of content, it's very easy to find and yeah, start editing your content. So lots of stuff to learn from these systems. One word about visual editing. I mean, when you go into the headless world, what you actually lose is the front end, right? Because you build your front end yourself. And Stroppy, as well as um, Sanity, and also Contentful, they partnered, for example, with Vercel. Vercel is a front end hosting service, and they um, start to integrate these headless CMSs, and they offer very nice editing features, um, even if you have like a structured headless CMS in the back. So that's very, very powerful. Um, basically, the idea is you click on an element and then you have uh, similar to maybe Gutenberg and other editors, you can directly edit um, your content on the fly. This means additional integration on your front end um, application and also how it's connected to your back end. It's not easy to do, but this will evolve over time. So I expect that, let's say, if you build a new site and client says, oh, uh, we want to host it on Vercel, do you offer Vercel CMS integration? Can we do that with Drupal? I think we should think about that as well. How we do, at, how we do it with Drupal and specifically NodeHive is actually when you, that's an example, so we show an iframe in the Drupal interface and then you can click on, this is a paragraph, but it can be any entity in, inside Drupal. You click on it and then in the sidebar you get the form, the Drupal form, and then you can save it and the front end will immediately update. So that's very powerful. I also have a, a video on nodehiveapp.com which you can see how that works and how easy it is. 
So conclusion, Drupal is a very strong option in the CMS world, and especially it's scalable beyond simple content models. So let's think about web forms, um, web form uh, functionality we couldn't find in Stroppy and others. And there are many modules in Drupal that are well established, offers headless APIs, and there are all these newer, younger CMS systems not there yet, right? So Drupal is there far ahead. But JS-based solutions are coming strong, and we should really have a look how they evolve and what we can learn from them. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we have to show this slide, um, come to the contribution, and then sprints. And with that said, we are finished with our presentation. Are there any questions? Thank you. I think there is a, ah, yeah. there is a mic in the yeah. center, sorry, yeah. Uh, hi, my name is John, I'm from chapter three. I was wondering, um, <clears throat> well, first of all, thank you for the presentation, it was very, uh, it was really good. I was wondering if you had had um, an opportunity to look at the next Dash Drupal project that's out there. Yeah, we use it, uh, that's cool. Uh, thank you for the contribution. Yeah, you should check out the next JS Drupal integration, wonderful solution. Thank you, Chapter 3 and Shatsian. Hello, FGM from Ozinet. In the event uh, as a session announcement, you mentioned that directors, but you didn't talk about it. Can you tell us something about directors? So you're specifically asking about permission and how that's No, happened. directors, the C uh, headless okay. CMS. Oh, oh yeah, uh, actually we have... The session. Yeah, during the preparation, we decided to um, include contentful instead of directors. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. We couldn't change the session uh, description. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm Mark from Kona Frames. Uh, I would just like to know if it's possible to get those slides somehow. Sure, yeah, yeah, we, we can publish it somewhere. Okay. Um, maybe through the app, I don't know exactly how that works, but of course, we can Thank do that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Luca from Sparfabric. Did you try multilingual uh, features uh, of those uh, other CMS? How does it uh, integrate? Uh... <laughs> Actually, no. I mean, we never built a real project with Contentful and the other options we show. So we cannot really say about uh, multilingual features. But as I uh, know, all of them offer um, multilingual features. Uh, but I, as I also know, multilingual is not easy. Uh, so it's, it would be very interesting to see how they handle, you know, is it always in sync or is it not in sync to translation, how they handle that. But all the options offer multilingual support uh, out of the box, actually. And if there is a question here. So uh, we have a question. Uh, what is the best way stack from your experience to build the front with Drupal as API. So what we did uh, till now was uh, to build the applications with Next.js. So we used uh, the Next Drupal uh, extension that chapter three mentioned, and it's a very nice document and uh, well done. With Next 13, we switched uh, to an own solution because uh, I think uh, there is like the new server components that it's not yet available uh, with next Drupal, so uh, that's the best way to start with, I think, to, to test the extension, to use it in our case with Next.js, and to use JSON API, I think it's a very nice solution. So thank you very much.